A little known fact about antifreeze is the fact that uh, the ethylene glycol that most antifreeze is made out of is actually naturally corrosive. Uh, so it's something that needs to be periodically changed. Uh, but that period typically is two to five years uh, before that has to occur. But sometimes things do get kind of out of hand. And here we have a sample of uh, when that kind of thing happens. And uh, the antifreeze, as we can see here, is not any of the colors that are typical of, of antifreeze here. It's, it's actually brown. And that can occur from you know, being in the car too long. It can also occur from uh, having problems where the system does not remain pressurized. And when this circumstance occurs, you may need more than just a drain and refill. You may actually have to clean the system uh, by using a flush uh, type of an agent. So here we have a typical radiator and the uh, coolant will typically flow in on one side uh, through the hose into the tank, flow through the radiator core through these little narrow tubes into the tank on the opposite side and return to the engine uh, on the other side. So sometimes we need to um, actually perform a chemical flush uh, with some sort of a flushing agent. So what we need to do in that case is first start by draining the radiator of all antifreeze that we can get out. Uh, please note that uh, you must observe local ordinances concerning the disposal of antifreeze. Antifreeze is a toxic substance um, and should not be poured into storm drains. It has to be disposed of properly. So uh, check your local regulations on that. Once we've drained the radiator, we then need to refill it with water and do our best to flush it out with just the water and then add the uh, chemical, um, whatever kind of a, a flush detergent type of agent that we have in there and start the engine and run it to full engine operating temperature, typically for 15 minutes or so, and then shut the vehicle off and drain the radiator and actually once again take the hose and refill the radiator and let it flow out draining it until it all comes out clear. When we're done with that process what we need to do is then refill the radiator with the proper kind of antifreeze for the car. Different manufacturers call for different types of antifreeze and the different colors kind of illustrates that. Here we have a typical green antifreeze, we have a type of antifreeze for Ford or Chrysler, um, uh, Honda, General Motors, and Toyota. Uh, and they all have their own formulas and you gotta maintain the proper formula for the proper car. The one thing that I would say, unlike some of our other demonstrations, when we would pre-mix the antifreeze, typically in most climates, you mix it half water, half antifreeze. I would recommend in this case, because of the flushing process, you now have an engine block that is full of water. And short of taking the engine out and turning it upside down, you're not likely to be able to get out that water out of there. So you need to look up the system capacity and make sure that you can add half of that capacity in full strength antifreeze in order to refill the system. And that would complete your process of cleaning the radiator.